let's just sew whatever. Hey everybody, so today I'm gonna do um, kind of a time lapse. I'll show you guys a little bit what's going on, but this is my pink machine that you guys can see from my Juki Industrial. This is a 114W103. I'm sure 114W103 is probably a better way to say it. Um, and it is a vintage chain stitch machine. So what it does is it embroiders um, and it just does thread chain stitched on top of fabric. And then you have to like knot it in the back to make sure it doesn't come out. This was just a little test piece I was doing. Um, but I'm working on a jacket for my friend's birthday. So I've got this kind of sketched out. It's not very centered. Um, I used white transfer paper and traced it. Um, I just kind of, I didn't trace it. I just kind of freehand drew it based on a uh, Google images. So I'm adding um, a little Totoro guy with a bow and then Gigi from Kiki's Delivery Service. Um, and then I made some little patches to go with it and I might chain stitch some other stuff on it. Um, but I'm going to be working on the back piece. So what this machine does, I'll kind of give you a better view. Um, this is the turn wheel. Um, there's a little like crochet hook needle down here. And then all of these parts move and you have to oil it very often. There is a, I do have like a video of me using it for the first time as well. And then there's this handle here, which I don't know if you can see things moving now, but it controls where the handle goes. So you pull down and that's what starts it. Um, so I might change up angles a little bit. I don't know if I'm gonna do a lot of um, sped up. Probably I will, cause this takes a long time, but. So that is the introduction to the machine and let's get started. All right, so let's see if this view will work. So I'm gonna first start on the bow. I'm gonna fill in the color and then I'll outline it in black. And if you have trouble um, getting your item un in under the needle, what you do is you unscrew the needle and lift up. This jacket does have some stretch, which um, isn't quite what I want. And then the higher you pull the needle up, the higher your the pill of your thread is going to be. And then the lower is the tighter it's going to be. It's kind of cool. So I think, I think that's good. So I'm going to start by kind of outlining and then filling in. Um, I wonder if I should put some tear away under it. Probably should, but whatever. I don't want to make it too thick, essentially. Yeah, so you can see. Cool. And so I am controlling it with my hand underneath and what my hands on top are doing are just kind of guiding the fabric a little bit. I'm probably going to outline it in black as well. I think it would be really cute if I had more colors to kind of outline it in a bright pink and then like fill it in with a lighter, but I don't have coordinating tones of this shade, so just making do with what I've got. All right, so now that I've outlined that section, what you can do is kind of um, make fill lines, essentially. At least that's what I have found to be helpful. So I'm going to start with these two little sections to kind of fill it in. So I'll zoom so you can see a little bit better. Hopefully lighting cooperates. Okay, here we go. 
we go. So you just fill in with circles. And I always find this to be the most satisfying thing to watch when other people are doing it, but I am not good at it. Well, I'm not great at it, I should say. So when I'm doing it, it's not satisfying. <laughs> I think my fill lines are a little thick. Anyway, there we go, that looks better. And you have to make sure that you um, keep your machine oiled. So that section is filled in and I'm going to kind of sketch out another fill line. I think it's really satisfying to do this over like a wool or a felt and make a patch and then put it on. because the wool or felt is thicker, um, but it also looks really nice when it's just straight on the jacket, so all about personal preference. All right, that section is done. Therapeutic. It is a lot of concentration as far as hand eye coordination, but it's so fun. It's literally painting with thread or drawing with thread, depending on how skilled you are. Um, I've looked at a lot of different chain stitchers. I will never be um, professional in any way, shape, or form as far as chain stitching. That's not really my goal. I just wanted to do something fun. Um, I feel like a lot of my sewing is business related and while it's fun to make money off of what you love, it can also be exhausting in a way. I mean, it, that makes it a job, it doesn't mean it's fun. So I wanted to have something that I could just kind of have fun with. So this is for a friend. Fill-in isn't amazing, but we'll call it a pattern on the bow. At least I'm being consistent. <laughs> um, I'm using like a wool, a, I, yeah, I think it's like a, an acrylic, acrylic and wool are not the same thing, um, but it's like a wooly texture acrylic thread so it fills faster. I also have like a silky one but I don't love that as much as I do this. Okay so I'm going to come around underneath my little character because I'm going to trace it in black anyway. And since this is a stretch jacket, I'm really doing my best not to stretch too much as I'm pulling. Because you can see how it's kind of starting to distort slightly, but once I fill it in, starting at the top 
with some fill lines. You can also raise your needle when you're filling in and it'll be kind of like a chenille fill. If you've ever seen those like really fluffy patches, it's more like that. Imagine it's kind of like a car with all those moving parts kind of grinding around. You want to make sure you oil it plenty. And I'll include the information of the channel of the person that I purchased my machine from. His name is Gabriel, and he was super helpful when I purchased the machine. Um, And still is like you can Facebook. Uh, the, I could Facebook message him with a problem. Um, he is in India, so that kind of makes a little bit of a difference in the time zone. But he's still super helpful. charge per hour. I know there's a ton out there, but I wouldn't doubt like starting at 40 an hour to like a hundred and something an hour because it is definitely a skill. This machine is super old. And you know, when you're for something like this, it's someone's knowledge and their art. So I would at least hope they charge accordingly. Alright, I'm getting a little less careful in this section. That's okay. Okay. So I'm gonna work on the little edges of the bow. Kind of create 
dimension with your fill lines as well if you stack it up a little bit higher or you know move the direction in which you're filling all right so i'm coming back around The Gigi is kind of erasing, but that's okay because it wasn't perfectly centered. So I'm just gonna kind of use it as a guide while I'm chain stitching it out anyway. I kind of figured that none of this would look exactly as I sketched it, so. Just kind of going with the flow. So cute. Make a play. I'm gonna try and do better at my fill. And like when you add a black outline to things, it really makes it stand out. Um, like I'm gonna add some detail lines in the bow. And stuff like that. At least that's my hope. <laughs> try and add some flowers as well. I probably should get some straight spray starch. I think that might help with um, the stretch of the jean material. All right, so I'm going to take my project off. Usually you use um, a little tool, but I have found that I can kind of wiggle it around to remove it. So yeah, there's that. And you do have to take the project off to um, change the thread. Maybe if you're an expert, you don't have to, but I have not been able to, well, I'll try. I'll try. Okay, so I'm gonna change my thread to um, this little cream color for the little guy in the middle. So I'm removing it from underneath. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but um, it goes through a little spring tension disc underneath the machine and then through um this other little doodad and then there's this thread grabber that you put under the machine through this hole uh, it's a little hard with the project in the way oh did i get it no, I didn't get it. <laughs> so yeah, like I said, I'm a total noob at this, but it's still fun. Okay, no, I cannot get through there. That's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my needle and lift up. Push out of the way. So this goes through there comes up. And then you're supposed to rotate one, two, three times. I'm gonna bring my needle back down and tighten it. Oh wait, I should have done that after I pulled my project. Ah, no, we're good. Okay, so I'm gonna sketch out this little little bunny guy. So you want to hold on to your thread and then you just kind of spin around until you catch it. But you got to hold on to your thread. 
There we go. I was like, it always takes me a minute to catch it. So I'm working on his little ears. And it always helps me kind of sketch it out first. And then you want to make sure that you don't catch your thread again. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it from underneath. I'm cutting my starting thread. Cool. And I'm going to sketch out his eyes because I don't want to do those twice. like a little owl and then I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually lift my needle just a little bit higher so that he's kind of fluffy yeah there we go And with this color, it's going to be harder to hide the black, so I figured to fill it in better. Start. So, is a regular embroidery machine faster? Absolutely. <laughs> and I have one. And I used to do a lot of machine embroidery, actually. I just find this to be really soothing. And like a little bit more artistic. Even though I used to like digitize my own files and stuff. Probably switch to black or um, white to fill in the eyes and then I'll switch to black and outline everything and then I'll work on the cat in time lapse. That's gonna take forever. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there. I'm gonna lower my needle so I can get my thread out easier. I'm gonna keep the needle lifted because I gotta take the project off and change my thread anyway. And then I'll actually, um, show you underneath as I'm changing the thread because I think that'll be helpful. All right, so I've got my white thread underneath. And from what I understand, comes up through this little thing. Slip it in through there. I'll grab my thread grabber. Pull up. Okay. All right, so I put my needle back into position. I need to turn the wheel three times. All right. And I'm holding on to my thread. Kind of want to hold it off to the side a little bit. And 
until you feel it grab. And I am going to be outlining these eyes with black and adding a pupil, so I just want to make sure I build up the white quite a bit to create a nice base. And then I'm lifting up my needle, removing the thread just a little bit, there we go, and just switching over. So there's no thread on my needle right now. I'll zoom you guys in a little bit more. Hopefully you can watch it like pick up the thread. There we go. Yay. That's it for the eyeballs. And again, I gotta move the project off to grab black thread. We'll try this angle for a little bit. So right now I do not want my needle to um, be too high up and make a really high thread stitch. Mm, words, because I'm outlining. So got my thread in up right away. We're not expecting that. So I'm just going to go slowly around the edge. It's a black jacket, so it's not making the biggest difference as I'm outlining, but still. I know some people who do, well, I don't know if they do it, but I have seen people that do their outline first and then fill in, but I have not been successful when I do that. Good on them. Okay, so now I'm just doing that little lift up of thread. Probably wrong, someone will tell me, no doubt. I think I'm going to lower my needle a little bit. Ever so slightly. There we go. Yeah, there we go, made my stitch that much smaller as I go around these eyes. Okay, so now I'm going to do a little pupil inside, so I'm, I got to lift up my needle a little bit. I'll show you the little, this is the little tool that it came with, but I can never, I guess it can work never seem to get it to work for me. Because you don't want to cut it, you know. I do want to undo that loop just a little bit. Okay, well, maybe it does work.
Hard scary part is over. So I'm gonna zoom you guys in so you can actually see. Okay, so we're moving over to outline the bow now. So I'm gonna go all the way around the outside and then I'll start adding detail. I think that'll work best for me. I mean, the jacket isn't like super, super black, so it's not like these lines are for nothing. They still are showing up, so that's good. But it is fun, you kind of want to think like a maze. How do I get back to that section and then the smallest amount possible and stuff like that? Alright, so I'm going to add a little, little line there. Coming around. I'll go around the bottom now. kind of looks like um, their whiskers on this little guy. All right, so then I'm going to stop my black stitching. And this guy had a little leaf that he was holding. So I'm going to sketch that out. Change my thread. Yeah, there we go. All right, so I've got this really fun green thread in. It's variegated, it's one of my favorites. Honey, you dumb. Forgot to lower my needle. <laughs> there we go. Can't catch if there's no needle. <laughs> hey, we got it. <laughs> Who would have thought? Oh, didn't tighten it enough. She's smart. Okay. Try again. We got it. <laughs> oh, Lord help me. Okay, 
so I can't really see the outline of his little leaf anymore, but I know it was just like two cute little things like that and then filled in. Kind of waiting till I got the darker green to come out. There we go. that's all that I'm gonna do for now. I think I need to resketch the center or maybe do a different character. So it's not incredible. It looks way better in person because the lighting is a little weird. Let's move to better lighting. All right, so here is the paper that I used. You can see, you can use this piece a couple of times. I think you could even, yeah, you can print out your design and then trace where you're wanting it. So yeah, it's actually super cute. Um, I'll probably add more of these like little leaf things here and there. Definitely need to re-sketch the center. I may end up not doing Gigi. Maybe I'll do like a no face and add some extra flowers or something like that, but I'll show you the patches I made. All right, so it's like an off-brand calcifer, but it's still cute. And then this cute little sit sprite. So these are just done on felt fabric, and these are going to go on the front of the jacket. Don't worry about what's underneath. So I added these fun stars. And I'm going to put the sit sprite on this side. I may do one more, and then I'm going to put calcifer on this side. So I thought it would be cool to have, like, this nice big back piece for the jacket um maybe i'll try and put some text on it or something but yeah so i hope you guys enjoyed uh this video on the cover stitch machine um the pink machine that you guys talk about in the background all the time <laughs> bye well, that was kind of abrupt uh if you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe let me know if you want to see more chain stitch videos or whatever okay bye